drum roll please <laughs> um, so according to my watch it's about 10 58 um, hopefully there's going to be more people rushing to join us shortly Margie how many are there on there now? there's Joseph <laughs> I did actually have once uh, a seminar where, where it was a porter and out. It's not, not an ideal situation. Yeah. Um, so if you're joining us, welcome. Um, welcome to the webinar. We're just going to give it a few more moments before we kick off. Uh, but thank you for being on time for those of you who have joined us. Um, We'll go through some housekeeping shortly, but just to let you know, the uh, webinar should last between 25 and 35 minutes, depending on the questions um, and trending um, how much detail we sort of go into. Uh, we are excited to bring you this webinar. It's the second in the series of webinars that we've done. Uh, next month's webinar, just to give you the heads up, is a uh, webinar on support coordination um, and in fact i've just been told uh, that a guest will be joining me on my podcast which is very very exciting um, I, I won't release details of that yet because we're just confirming times and dates but she is in my opinion anyway the driving force behind support coordination in australia so we're very excited to have a conversation with her and um, she's asked me what i'd like to talk about and I'm excited to grill her on what it takes to be a great support coordinator. So that's coming next month. Um, it's 10.59, so we're just going to give people a few more moments to, to click into gear and join us uh, before we officially kick off. Uh, but again, thank you for joining us. It's, uh, it's great to see, um, well, not see, but know that a few of you are here. Um, and, uh, and to be able to present to you this, uh, this webinar. Um, so we just tipped over 11 o'clock. I will just be courteous to those people that are not as efficient as you lot and give them a couple more moments. Um, as I say, we are, we are going to drive to a pretty strict time frame. Um, with regards to this, it should be, you know, 20, 25 minutes of Margie and I chatting to you about uh, what we believe are the, um, I guess, the myths and conjecture around plan management. Um, and uh, and then we'll have some questions and answers afterwards, and we're free to stick around. We're, we're happy to to try and um, uh, give you as much time with us as possible afterwards. We're not in any rush to to leave you, but we're conscious that it's the middle of some some people's day, so we just wanted to enable you to get back to work, family, or um, hopefully enjoy the sunshine because the sun is shining mm. today. Uh, we're down in Barrel in the Southern Highlands. Um, and uh, I've come from Sydney today, and it's uh, it's nice to see the sun is shining again. Uh, I hope that you all have all stayed safe. Um, all right, well, 11.01, um, again, I'm a bit of a stickler for sticking to time frames, so we might officially uh, welcome you to the Care Support webinar, Truth, Lies, and Damned Lies. Um, before we kick off, I'd uh, like to just do an acknowledgement of country. I'd like to begin by acknowledging the traditional custodians of land on which we meet today. We are coming to you from uh, the Gundagara land, uh, the Gundagara people, and we'd like to pay our respects to elders past and present, and I extend that respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders joining us today. I'd also like to extend that welcome to all of you who are joining us. Um, and. Uh, welcome to this second in a series of webinars where we try and inform and educate uh, and I guess dispel some of the myths and for us um, we have been in the plan management space since 2017 and we've seen a lot uh, and heard a lot read a lot just of, 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 um, of, of rumors conjecture of people telling you that they know right the, the right from wrong and, and we'd like to try and dispel some of those myths um, Auscare Support, we're a nationally accredited uh, provider of plan management services. Uh, we do support coordination and we have a support staff arm as well. Um, and we're also going to talk to you about a, uh, an interesting channel of our business called Budget Builder, which is a good thing if you are plan managed or not. Um, and 
I guess in terms of who we are, um, I'm Max King. I'm the CEO and, uh, and founder of Oscare Support. Um, I've been a support coordinator. I was originally a plan manager too, trying to wear a few hats, um, and an accountant by background. Uh, and to my right, to your left, is Margie. Margie Tully. Um, so similar, similar background um, in accounting, so also an accountant. Um, and then have been very much involved in the world of disabilities and very passionate about disabilities and helping people with disabilities. So that's why we're now into plan management and I too have been a plan manager. Yeah, and look, uh, Margie and I were here when, when it was uh, you know, a very small business and look, we're not a big business now, but we, uh, we support 1,200 clients and that's growing every day and we're very, very proud of the work that we do and, and we feel that we're in a position, I guess, to try and, 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 and give some, dispel some of the myths and educate people around plan management. Just as some housekeeping, just before we do get started, as I said, time frames, 25 minutes roughly of us talking and then some questions. And just with regards to those questions, and I understand that people are keen to, to, to get some clarity around individualized cases. Uh, without us knowing a little bit more about you, and I don't think Facebook Live is the right forum to do that, we are unable to be answering specific questions, but we are hoping that you can um, send those to us or provide us a time frame to catch up with you at a later date to try and give you answers to those questions. As I say, we didn't want to, to say no to you now, but it's really just that we don't feel that we're giving you the, the right answer without knowing a little bit more about you that Facebook Live doesn't necessarily enable us to do. But we would like to take some questions and answers and we feel that we will educate you along the process and the format. So, um, yeah, so please do ask questions. But again, as I say, the specific individualized questions we may not be able to answer. And then at the end of this, we will be providing some information. And as we go along, there'll be some information provided in the comments sections with regards to um, numbers that are relevant to the NDIS, uh, easy to read guides and other, other bits of information that we've taken and sort of you know, isolated and put into a PDF format so that you can have that information a little bit more clearly and a little bit more succinctly. Um, so yes, excited, let's get into the guts of it. Um, and uh, I'm going to start with the role of a plan manager. So I'm going to talk to you today about exactly what, what is a plan manager and what do they do? So a plan manager, they will provide, they will pay your providers for the support that you receive. So what does that practically mean? So if you have plan management in your plan and it's an additional um, service that's funded, so it doesn't come out of your current funding, it means that when you go and have a service, so you go and see a service provider, you don't have to pay for that invoice straight away. So the, your service provider will send that invoice to um, a plan manager and then we will draw those funds down from your plan and we will pay the plan manager directly. So it's a great service means that you don't have to worry about paying the invoice. We'll have a service agreement with you. And the industry now is very, very used to plan managers and used to plan management. So when you say to one of your service providers, hey, I'm plan managed, they'll say, okay, that's great. Um, who's your provider? And we'll say, just send all of the invoices to a simple email address. And they're very used to doing that. So it's a very easy service to have. Um, the other key role of a plan manager is we can help you manage your funds and monitor your spend. And so we'll talk about that a little bit later, about the, the, um, the applications that we have and the way that we can help you do that. So now over to Max, and you're going to talk about what is, um, so what sort of supports are um, or, or what a plan manager doesn't do. Doesn't do. So yeah, look, that's what a plan manager does do. And one of the biggest myths I think we're trying to dispel today is what a plan manager does not do. And um, I, I want to be very clear about this. The role of a plan manager is not to determine if an invoice presented to them to be paid is reasonable and necessary. Okay, so I'm just going to try and repeat that and break that down because I really want to try and be clear about this. It is not the role of a plan manager to decide if an invoice presented for payment is reasonable and necessary. Okay. Now, that's not to say that we can't help you to try and make that decision yourself. But as a plan manager, and we've heard lots of examples of this, where a plan manager has refused to pay an invoice, and that invoice is considered by the participant or the, the person who's presenting that to be reasonable and necessary according to the guidelines, and they've refused to pay it. And that's really not their role. And this is something that I know is, is one of the biggest issues that we've heard um, in Facebook chat groups, or anecdotally when we've talked to participants who are plan managed, or people who are reluctant to be plan managed because that's what they've heard. But a plan manager 
is not responsible for making that decision. And, and, and again, this is in the act, it's very clearly defined. Uh, now, a lot of plan managers have taken it upon themselves to be this arbiter of truth, to be the police person around some of the plan. And, and, and frankly, uh, we understand why that is, because they're trying to help, but in fact, sometimes that's a hindrance. So we want to be very clear about what a plan manager is not designed to do, not designed to decide, not be the arbiter of truth around things that are necessary. The other thing the plan manager doesn't do is it is a plan manager should not pay above the capped rate. So again, uh, a lot of uh, a lot of plan managers or people that want to be plan managers perhaps are choosing to be plan managers because they would like to choose the, to pay above the capped rate. A plan manager must abide by the capped rate. Um, now, that's an advantage and a deterrent to some people. It depends on some of the uh, some of the services that you want, but most of the sort of supports that we see being provided are within the capped rate. And that just gives you a checks and balances if you're not sure about what is a reasonable rate to be charged. So yeah, that's the one thing. Plan managers have to abide by cap rates. Um, and what we're gonna try and do now is go through a, basically a, a kind of series of questions around how do you determine, uh, if it's not the role of a plan manager to determine what's reasonable and necessary, how do you, uh, in a simple and easy way, determine whether something that you would like to spend uh, plan money on is reasonable and necessary and therefore is, is, is a, as allowable. Um, and so the the way that we've done this, and this is something that we are about to send out, I think if you look in the comments section, there should be a, a PDF of, 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 uh, of seven questions. And this is included in, in a booklet, booklet three, and it's on page 10. And we refer to this often in, the, in when, we, uh, when we talk to clients around um, when we get asked the question, can I spend money on this, or can I can I purchase this, or can I um, you know, use my plan for this? Um, and I'm going to read the questions out, and then Margie and I are going to go through a couple of examples. And and really, this is our first port of call. If you are a client of ours, or if you are not a client of ours, and you just ask us for, for some advice, my advice is always go to this these seven questions to see whether you feel that this is something that is is, is allowable under a plan. It, it, and it's it's a good guide. It's not necessarily the hundred percent, but let's 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 kick off and go through it, and then you can sort of try and then you can you, we can go through an example and, and then we can see from there. So the seven questions, as I say, which should be in the in the comment section. So the first question: Will the support or service help you to achieve the goals in your NDIS plan? So is the cost of the support, question two, is the cost of the support reasonably priced and is it best value for money compared to other supports? So question three, can you afford the support or service within your approved NDIS budget? As in, do you have capacity in your funding to spend that money? And we know that obviously overspending is a concern for people, but yet underspending is also a situation that we've come across many times, which we, we hope to help you alleviate. So that's three questions. Fourth question, will the support or service help you to improve how you connect to your local community and improve the relationships you have with family and friends? Okay. So up to now, we're hoping that you've said yes to all those questions. Uh, and number five is, uh, is something we're hoping would be a no. So should the support or service be funded by other government services instead? So, for example, dental, health, hospital services, education, housing, and public transport. So, should the support of service be funded by other government services? If the answer to that is no, then we, we're winning and we carry on. Will the support or service, question six, will the support or service help you to participate in activities with friends and other members of your community or help you to find or keep a job? Okay. And question seven, is it safe? Uh, so your supports or services should not cause you any harm or put other people at risk. So seven questions, pretty concise, pretty easy to navigate, pretty easy to understand. We're hoping that there are six yeses and one no. So the yeses are all one to five, one to four, and six to seven, and yeah, question five we're hoping you say no to, so it shouldn't be paid for by other agencies. So we refer you to that. If you have any, this is the start of a process. If you're unsure whether you, you know something that you'd like to spend money on is allowable under your plan, 
is allowable under the guidelines that the NDIS has provided, then refer to these seven questions. We're going to go through an example now of something that has been included and then hasn't been included. And we're going to do that by referring to these seven questions again. Okay. So we had a specific example recently about um, one of our clients wanting to purchase a low-cost exercise bike. And so we went through the seven questions and then we did actually ask the NDIS also whether this could be funded. And the answer came back as yes, it could be. So it's relevant to ask the seven questions about whether or not this low-cost exercise bike would fit into that personal plan. So will a low-cost exercise bike, will that support or, or service help to achieve your goals? Yes. So a client had exercise uh, and continue and, and improved mobility as part of their goal. So yes, the exercise bike included that and tick that box. So yes. And then is the cost of the exercise bike, is it reasonably priced and is it best value for money? So definitely it was a low cost exercise bike. Uh, if you've ever looked at exercise bikes, there's some that are very, very expensive. This was a low cost one and provided reasonable price and value for money. So yes. And can you afford the, the exercise bike within your approved NDIS budget? Again, yes. So our client had the funding in their budget and capacity to, to spend this money. So yes. And then will the support or will the exercise bike help you to improve um, uh, help you to improve you how you connect to your local community and will it improve relationships with your family and friends? Yes. I mean it's commonly it's common knowledge that uh, improved mobility and exercise helps both with mental but also physiological well being and therefore it would help me to connect with fans, friends and family. Um, could the bike be funded by any other government um, organisation service? So there was no other sources of funding for this, this bicycle. And then will the bike help you participate in activities with friends and other members of the community or will it help you to keep a job? So yes, it will definitely help me participate in activities, increase mobility, increase mental um, capacity and, 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 and well-being, definitely help me. And then is it safe? Will it put you at harm or any other anybody else at harm? No, no, no. It was a fairly sedentary and stationary bike, but it was uh, so it was good. It was safe, uh, and so that, as you can see, got six yeses and one no, which is what we're looking for, and that was approved. Um, the example that we were going to go through, we won't go through all the questions, so I think it might be a bit of overkill. But the example that was declined uh, when we sought advice from the NDIS was with regards to uh, medications. Uh, and that's a commonly held um, understanding that if Medicare looks after medications, then the NDIS will not do that. Obviously, there are some slight nuances around that, which were created around the tribunal, and we're not going to get into that today. But essentially, the, uh, the seven questions, it failed the seven question test. So if you're still answering those seven questions, and, and, you, and, and you've you haven't got the six yeses and one no that you're looking for. The next step for you is to seek clarification from the NDIS themselves. Now, this is a, a simple email to inquiries at ndis.gov.au. And again, if you look at the comments section here, you should see the email address coming up there. And so we do this often uh, to assist clients with decision making. So we will see clarification from the NDIS as to whether an item or a service or a support is allowable to be claimed under a person's plan. Uh, Timeframes are always the big question on this. So if you are considering making uh, sending this email in, uh, I suggest you do it sooner rather than later. The timeframes, two to three weeks, is what we've heard anecdotally. Uh, obviously, sometimes the NDIS is inundated with email requests. And obviously, this is a generic inquiries app, but they are pretty good. It does get dealt with. It may not get dealt with in a single day or a working week, but it does get dealt with. Uh, and you can follow up. So you can resend the emails to the same email address, and there's, there's, a, there's a fairly efficient ticketing system. So seeking clarification. And again, some come back yes if it's valid, and some come back declined if it's invalid. And that's something that you know the NDIS uh, have uh, that inquiries email to determine, and that's the next step. If you feel that seven questions aren't answering your question, aren't answering the item correctly, and you still would like it to be pursued, then let's uh, let's let's take that inquiry to the NDIS. So, I guess that's that's a lot to unpick there. Um, and in summary, just to go, it's not a plan manager's responsibility to determine whether a an item or an invoice is reasonable or necessary. 
That's the big one. Fire managers do have to abide by the cap rates. And if you're curious as to whether something is allowable or not, our suggestion is to ask yourself the seven questions. And if you're still not sure, then email the MDIS. All right, we're going to follow this up, but I just want to reiterate those key points because they, to me, are the biggest myths around plant management. We're going to kick on to a section on what are the benefits? So why be plan managed? Other than, you know, it seems like there's a few questions to ask, but why be plan managed? Margie? So um, plan management actually is a really great service. Um, and one of the biggest benefits is that it means that you can have services from any provider. It doesn't have to be a registered NDIS provider. Uh, and that's a really big benefit. It gives you a lot of choice on who you can then go and have your supports with, especially around therapists. A lot of therapists aren't becoming um, registered. Um, it's quite a big burden and um, they're opting to remain unregistered. A lot of them work as individuals. And so it means that you can go and you can talk to any provider um, and seek their services. And once again, it's just really easy. You talk to your provider, you'll um, have an agreement with them and all they have to do is send us the invoices and then they will get paid. Um, once again, it doesn't come out of your budget. It's an extra service that the NDIS add on for you. Um, we have some great methods and um, some great systems for tracking budgets and for tracking spend, so we'll talk about that as well. So you don't have to access the NDIS online portal. I think it's a good idea often that people do, but we also have a lot of great systems that can help you track your, your invoices and your budget. Um, and one of the big advantages also of having an NDIS provider, it means that uh, to having a plan manager means that we will keep all the invoices for you. So you don't have to print out invoices and put them in a folder and make sure you pay them. We keep all of the invoices um, and we send you a list of all of the invoices that we paid every month. So we do all of the record keeping for you and we do all of the payments for you. Um, and so it makes it very easy for you to go and have your services. Um, Max has talked about the, the cap rates and so the cap rate is, 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 it means it's compliant to the NDIS price guide. So, to, so one advantage of that is that providers have to for, um, have to comply with the price guide and, and have to keep within the set rates provided by the NDIS. And so that is good for you as well. It means that you'll get more services for your money. Um, so now I'm going to hand it over to Max and he's going to talk to you about how you can switch to being plan managed. So I guess one of the other big myths that we've heard around plan management is how to change or it's not that you, you know, an individual is not able to change. Uh, and again, we want to try and dispel this myth and be very clear about the process to change. Um, so we talk about three key points. Uh, the first one is pick up the phone if you're able to or send an email. Uh, and again, the 1-800 number should be put into the comment section just here. The email address is the same inquiries at. Uh, so send them an email uh, or give them a call and just literally tell them that you'd like to be plan managed. Um, once you've made that determination, if you have a plan manager to nominate, Oscar Support being one, there are lots of other plan managers, there are lots of other great plan managers out there as well. So you, you, you would be best to, to have chosen a plan manager prior to calling the NDIS so that you are able to nominate them. Um, but that shouldn't determine or deter you from making the call. So pick up the phone, tell them you would like to be plan managed, and nominate a plan manager. As we've said a couple of times, it is then added to your plan. It's not that you would become plan managed and the plan value is reduced. So plan management is added on top of your plan. So your existing plan, the value of your plan, does not get lessened by becoming plan managed. Quite the opposite. It's put on top. And as I say, then you have a plan manager to support you in your journey in the NDIS. Um, and I guess why we think that Oscare Support are a, a great plan manager, and as I said, there are lots of good plan managers out there, so I, I think that's the important thing to say. Many of financial intermediaries are, are really good, uh, and we encourage those people who are deciding to, to investigate some in your community or some that they might have seen, or come and talk to us. You know, there, there, there are lots of good plan managers out there. What we think that we do really, really well, and I think this is important for, for us to, to sort of say that, that we want, if you are choosing a plan manager, have these in mind. So we send you monthly statements. Um, and in addition to those monthly statements, uh, we have uh, an app 
that you can download on your telephone, uh, both on Android and iPhone. Uh, and the monthly statement and the app enable you to see in real time if it's on the app or on a monthly basis if it's on the statements. All of the invoices that have been charged to each of your accounts, to each of the categories. So it breaks it down very clearly. Opening balance, spend in the month, closing balance. And those, that, that, that simple fact of communicating with you what has been spent gives you the capacity to understand what you've got at the end of the month and potentially what you've got to spend in the rest of the year or less, less the time frame for your plan. And those things are really important. And it can allow you to, for example, if someone's put an invoice through for maybe an incorrect amount or it's been coded in the wrong place or whatever it may be, and the, you know, there are things that happen like that, um, you know, you can question that. Or, or if you've got the app, in fact, you can actually say to, to, to us, uh, don't pay anything on my behalf until I've approved it. Awesome. You know, that gives you the control around the money that we're taking from your plan to pay to your providers. It gives you the control of it. Okay, so we don't pay anything. You don't tell us to. Awesome. Uh, some people want that. Some people don't. Some people know that we will only have service agreements with approved um, that you've approved, and therefore we'll only pay people that we think that should be paid by you. So you know that there's there's different horses for courses. But if you want full control over what is spent on your plan, then you are able to do that using our app, and you know then you have a monthly statement that reinforces that. In addition to that, and something that I'm going to get Margie to talk about, we have Budget Build, which uh, is a service that we offer to all of our plan managed clients on a light touch basis to start with, and that enables you to break down your plan. Mm. So we're trying to provide you as many ways and as much sort of as many ways that you can manage your budget and you can manage your spend. So there's also lots of questions around, well, how do I manage my budget? Um, how do I make sure I don't go over? Um, how do I make sure that I've got enough funds to pay my providers? So the monthly statement and the app will keep you informed all the time about your budget and about how much money you have to make sure that you've always got enough money to, provide, to pay your providers. And to help with that, um, we, we have another tool, like a, a budgeting tool that Max has just talked about which will split out your plan initially. So you know, you'll know you know exactly how many services you can have throughout, the, throughout your plan and the cost of those services. So it'll help you to say, yes, I'd like a support worker and I'd like them Monday, Wednesdays and Fridays and I can have them for the year. And then you'll know straight away that you can afford that service and then you can go out and you can go and engage um, a support worker for yourself. So we can set you a budget to start off with and then you can track your spend throughout your plan. So it makes it really easy for you to manage your your plan. It needs needs um, really easy for you to manage your the, the finances of the NDIS, um, and it takes away a lot of the stress or the strain about wondering you know whether or not I'm going to have the funds to to um, have all the supports that you need. So it really helps you to be confident to go out there and to get all the support and the, all the services that you need. So we're really sort of actively trying to help you manage manage. Um, um, the finances and we you know as a team we partner with you to do that yeah and and look the, 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 you know we know that um most plans are being sort of you know are coming to the end of their 12 month period or the end of their plan period with funds that have been not underspent uh, and we are really you know i mean that's that's okay if you know if you hadn't needed to spend the money that's fine but you know we are really hoping that we can help you to spend 100 percent of your money across the course of the plan in the way that you want to do um and that could be that it's you know it's 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 you know it's loaded across certain holidays, or it could be loaded over a footy season, something like that. Who knows? Who knows? Whatever it is that you want, we're trying to trying to create the plan to, to best serve you. Um, uh, yeah, so that budget build is a is a service that we are offering to all of our all of our plan managed clients. And in fact, if something if you don't want to be plan managed by us, you can uh, engage with us to do that separately. But um, that, that is really, I guess, you know, the, the, the core bits of control of your funds. The other thing that I'd say around on care support, and this is really important to us as, a, as team members, is that we're there to answer the phone or answer emails. So we have a huge, I guess, hugely, you know, customer service focused team behind the scenes that really want to make sure that, you know, if you call, we answer the call. If you send us an email, we answer your email. And we respond to you, you know, as quickly as we possibly can. Obviously, sometimes we get quite complex inquiries and they need some investigation from us to make sure that we answer them correctly. But we're there for you to try and help you to, to navigate this. And we understand 
once it all gets going and it's all up and running, you know, it should just be quite smooth. But sometimes to get there, it does take some, you know, jumping across some hurdles and, and, and jumping through some hoops. But um, yes, yeah, so look, I guess taking it back a step or two, because that's pretty much it from Margie and I, um, just to re recap on, I guess, the big things there. And I think, you know, I've, I've mentioned them a couple of times, and I'm going to mention them again. The big one for me, and I think it's important to communicate with everyone, a plan manager is not responsible for determining if an invoice or a spending that you would like is reasonable and necessary. It's not our role, okay? That's not to say we won't help you determine whether you think it's right, but it's not, we are not the arbiter of truth. We're not the person that decides or we're not the entity that decides, okay? Uh, plan managers have to abide by cap, cap rates. That's the other thing that's important to know. And uh, I think there was some, you know, conjecture and, 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 and at the start of when we started doing this, you know, I think probably that was slightly less uh, clear from the NDIA, but it's very clear. Plan managers have to abide by price guide. Um, and then the price, there's a, the plan management is able, it, it, it's, sorry, let me start again. Plan management is open and accessible to everybody that would like it. So call the NDIS. Chat to them, tell them you want to be plan managed, nominate a plan manager, and then you know, within a light touch review time frame, two to three weeks, you should be able to be plan managed. Now, we, we, we don't have figures, but we we anti, you know we estimate around 99.5% of people are, are eligible. There's a few that are not because of the size of their plans or whatever, maybe there's some other reasons, but most people are eligible for plan management, and we would encourage you to explore it. So that's it from us. I hope that we've educated, I hope that we've um, also dispelled some of the myths. Um, I hope that we've given you some clarity around some of the stuff. We would definitely encourage you to either download from the comments section here or or, or, our, or we'll follow up with emails to you to, to look at that seven points that's in booklet three, page 10. Um, I think it's a really good guide and we're just gonna go over some questions. Do we have questions, Joe? No questions? No, oh, awesome, okay, well, not so awesome, I guess. Uh, are there any questions? If there are no questions that you have, what I'd love to suggest is please um, get in touch with us, uh, our 1-800 number, um, to, able to, to enable you to set up a time with one of our plan managers is 1-800-940-515 or the email address is info at support I-N-F-O at auscaresupport.com.au um, and we will put you in touch with either a budget builder from Margie's team or a plan manager from Beck Reeves' team, and they will be able to try and, I guess, uh, run you through if there's some queries, comments, concerns, conjecture around if something is eligible. We'll help you dispel those myths, um, and hopefully, you know, we can encourage you to become plan managed either by us or by um, by another great plan management agency because there are lots out there so yeah um if there are no other questions joe joe's sitting on the side of me if there are no other questions we're going to wrap it up there 31 minutes in um there's 23 24 25 people on this call originally so i wanted to just extend a, a huge thank you to you um uh please fire away with any questions to us as i say for the on the telephone call or the email address and if not that's it folks See you next month uh, on the, oh, have we got a question? <laughs> I've just been told we've got a question. It's just about to wrap it up there, folks. Um, uh, the question, I don't know if I can see the question. Let me just see if I can. Um, let me just see if I can see the question. Oh. Can I contest my funding with the NDIS? Um, so, uh, I'm going to speculate here on what that question actually refers to. So uh, there's a couple of things that you can contest. If you feel that overall your plan is not sufficient uh, when you've had your uh, planning meeting, then there is a time frame to, to contest that. Um, and that time frame is 30 days after the plan issue date, I'm going to say. Mm. I think it's 30 days. Um, I'd have to confirm that, but that's a, that's a that's an initial plan issued and reviewed. Uh, if you have um, asked for something to be paid that has been declined by the NDIA, the you are able to go back and obviously email them back and ask for a review of that decision. 
Uh, there is no guarantee that that though will make any difference to the original decision. Most of the time, the NDI's decisions are correct according to their guidelines. Um, but uh, uh, if you would like to ask us uh, with some more information around that, I'm more than happy to try and take that up with you, uh, Sambo and Matomo. So yeah, let us know uh, what that is. If we can help you, we're more than happy to. Uh, obviously, it's a little bit difficult to know, uh, I guess, the context of that question. But yes, yeah, there are definitely, you know, the, the NDIS are very uh, reasonable and they're easy to, well, yeah, they, they provide channels for us to discuss any decisions that were made. Um, so yeah, we're happy to try and help that. Um, all right. Thanks very much, uh, everyone who's here. Appreciate you all coming to, to take part in this. And that's it from us. All right. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye. Thank you.